This is the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Hello, Texas. This is Governor Sarah Palin. In the U.S. Senate race, I support Ted Cruz. Join me. Choose Cruz for Senate. And many did just that. Sarah Palin continues to play kingmaker. The governor's endorsements have proven very powerful this election season, and this past week she helped underdog Ted Cruz force a runoff in Texas. In Wisconsin this coming Tuesday, Governor Scott Walker and Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish both face a recall election. Both are backed by Governor Palin. We'll tell you how you can help out in the Badger State. Also Tuesday, several primaries will be held across the country, including one in New Jersey. Today, we're joined by Bader Carmoot, the professor and businessman who's taking on the GOP establishment and running for U.S. Senate. Mr. Carmoot, welcome. Thank you. Hello. You, sir, are really an American success story, and now you're running for the U.S. Senate in New Jersey looking for the Republican nomination. Tell us, sir, first about your background. Your family came to America in the 70s from Jordan and really had to work hard here. Absolutely. This great country was like a beacon for my family from halfway around the world. They looked towards America for the opportunities and the uh, prosperity that this great nation offers hard work, and they came to this great country to offer it to our, you know, the children, and it was our hope to also be able to offer it to my children, and that's why I'm compelled to run, because I feel it's under attack. You being of Arab descent, does that give you some special insight into international affairs, some of the things we're dealing with overseas, whether it's oil or terrorism or what have you? Absolutely. I believe I have a decent understanding of the Arab mindset, and I have a clear understanding of the history of the Middle East, and uh, also a relationship between the United States and Israel is extremely vital coming from someone who's familiar with that region. I truly believe that Israel has a right to exist in peace and prosperity, and Israel should have an equal right to defense and security, and it should not have to ask anyone for permission to defend itself. That's exactly what I was going to get to next. You are pro-Israel. Talk about a little more why, and what has the response been from other New Jerseyans from the Middle East? Well, it's not just pro-Israel. I believe the most important thing is to realize that Israel is the only stable democracy in that region. I'm really pro-stability, and the Arab nations in, around Israel have not demonstrated that yet. And uh, as far as uh, Iran, as its, threat, its goal is to push the Jews into the, into the sea, and that's absolutely unacceptable. And as a strong ally of the United States and a source of enormous amount of information for us, we have to stand very closely to Israel, and I feel this administration, uh, with Senator Bob Menendez going along with it, has been nothing but a disgrace in their handling of our strongest ally. Now, your family is Christian. What was that like for your father and for all of you in Jordan, and even now in the U.S.? I bet people often assume you're Muslim. Yeah, there's a Christian Arabs are a small group. We're a minority, even among our own. We're still a minority in the Arab world. But nonetheless, here in this great nation of ours, this Judeo-Christian country, um, we know uh, we do appreciate the the opportunities of the First Amendment to worship Christianity here, which is not available in many Arab countries. But the right for Muslims to worship here in the United States is available to them as well. I just wish they would see the advantage of that and offer that privilege to others in the Arab world. You say you want to give your children the country your parents gave you. Is, is that something that's slipping away under Barack Obama? Absolutely, and that's really what's compelled me off the couch to enter this race. You know, I come from over the world of business. I've spent over 20 years in my own business, you know, restaurant, uh, food business, real estate. So I know what the environment needs to be in order to create uh, jobs. And this administration, I think what it's lacking is the understanding on how to do that. Uh, Business is is not seeing any uh, signs of confidence coming out of Washington. Therefore, they're being hesitant. And I have a six-point plan on job creation, uh, but this administration is absolutely doing the opposite of every one of those points. And you said the country that your parents gave you, uh, your folks had to work pretty hard, didn't they? They certainly did. I mean, as a little boy, I remember we lived in the back of a factory where my father used to work in the motor home that we were parked and living in the back of that factory so there's nothing that we you know was handed to us entitlements 
for people who truly deserve them, that's fine, but my family chose to work as hard as humanly possible to achieve the American dream. And thankfully, I'm glad they did because that's something that I want to bestow and teach my children to earn, to earn everything humanly possible in this great country. What are the things in New Jersey in particular that you'd like to tackle if elected? What are people complaining about when you talk to them on the campaign trail? Well, I am running for federal office, but I do believe uh, the unconstitutional Menendez Obamacare is a problem here in New Jersey uh, along with the federal uh, in other states. So I would love to see, and, uh, and people have really uh, been in, uh, uh, reinforcing this, to see a repeal of the unconstitutional Menendez Obamacare and replace it with the ability to purchase health insurance across state lines. Because I come from the world of business, and I know the best way to lower the price of any product is competition, and that's what we need in health insurance. And taxes is another problem that people complain about. You know, our taxes are just unbelievably high, not only in New Jersey, but nationwide, and corporate tax is high, that it's driving businesses out of business. So I support lowering the corporate tax rate. Right now we're the highest in the world at 35%. I would love to see it drop to 15%. I'd love to see American companies allowed to bring back their foreign profits from overseas, repatriate that profit, and also uh, um, even out the playing field by having some sort of a flat tax so everybody has some skin in the game. Right now we have uh, you know, 51% of the people who don't pay tax at all. So uh, taxes are another problem. There's so many things that we can be doing that are, we're not doing. But one thing we are doing that we shouldn't be doing is surrendering our rights to the United Nations. You know, we're, we're, we're allowing the United Nations uh, through various programs like Agenda 21 and over-regulation with the EPA that uh, uh, they're impeding on our constitutional rights, and that should never be allowed. But unfortunately, it's being allowed as we speak. You know, New Jersey is such an interesting state because even though it's the third smallest in size, you could drive the whole thing in three hours, yeah. you have everything in New Jersey from, from the cities to the urban areas to the beaches to farms. And I've always thought that if we could ever get a conservative on the federal level, like a U.S. Senate spot from New Jersey, they could really do a lot for this entire country because they've seen it all in their state. Problem is they keep electing, well, non-conservatives. Yeah, it's really been a while since we've had a Republican, forget about conservative, right. a Republican in the United States Senate. Um, I would love to be able to represent the good people of New Jersey in Washington. Uh, the advantage I believe we would have is the fact, that, as, you ha as you just pointed out, is we do have that diversity here in New Jersey. I mean, look at the Democrats for the last 40 years have been senators in New Jersey, and look at the mess we're in. I believe we're ready for a change. New Jersey is ready for change, and the people of New Jersey deserve better. We deserve better than what we have representing us in Washington. Right now, Republicans are saying there's taxation without representation because the things that we stand for are not being represented. They're not being discussed in Washington. It wasn't until uh, less than a year ago that Bob Menendez himself says that now it's time to come back to New Jersey and focus on New Jersey. No, sir, that was time six years ago when we sent you to Washington. For five years he was AWOL helping Boxer and others get reelected rather than focusing on the interests of New Jersey. It is time to focus on New Jersey. Now, you've highlighted uh, very well the uh, liberal record of the incumbent, but first things first, you're going up against the big, bad, moderate GOP machine. How do you approach that in the primary? Grassroots all the way, I assume. Yeah, absolutely grassroots. Uh, my opponent, my Republican opponent, whom I'll be going up against on June 5th, uh, the candidate is an establishment candidate. He's been in New Jersey politics for 23 years. He's a career establishment candidate. Uh, I am not. I am a citizen representative. And as a 20-year politician in New Jersey, my opponent has been a part of New Jersey's problem. He cannot possibly be the same person to be a part of Washington's solution. Are you familiar with the Americans for Prosperity? Yes, sir. They have a, a scorecard, a taxpayer scorecard on my opponent, and they gave him a D for 2012. Wow. That does not sound like a conservative. 
No, not at all, no, and they continue to get away with it. I mean, so, some changes in New Jersey are recently a little better than years past, but like you said, uh, you know, people still going for these establishment types. Have Have you gotten a good response from from the people? I, I mean, I know you're out there shaking hands and talking to folks and speaking at different places. You're you're out there busy every day. Uh, how's it been getting to know uh, your fellow New Jerseyans? I have absolutely been all over the state. And when you said it takes about three hours to drive the state, believe me, I know I've measured every inch of it practically. <laughs> I, need, I need a new set of tires and a new pair of shoes. Exactly. But the, the beauty of it is I got to meet so many wonderful people. And uh, with that, I have absolutely no regret. What I have learned in the last uh, several months that I've been traveling this state all the way from Cape May all the way up to the high points of New Jersey, what I've learned is people are frustrated but yet are still hopeful. They have not given up, rolled over, and played dead yet. They, uh, they're responding very well to a positive message. When I talk through my six points of job creation, they understand, they agree, they respond very positively. When I talk about an uplifting message, rather than a president and pres- uh, you know, President Obama and Bob Menendez putting Americans down, so you can't lift people up if you're constantly putting them down. And I believe that's a mistake that they keep making. My message is positive, positive all the way. We are the greatest nation on earth. Why, did, why are we the greatest nation on earth? We have to go back and look at what made us great and go back to those principles rather than move away from them. And unfortunately, that's what this administration has been doing. This is exactly the type of candidacy I think Sarah Palin would encourage. You're not the normal cookie-cutter candidate, and Palin has talked about that. All Americans doing their part. And because of that, you're featured on the American Grizzlies United Candidates list. AGU, of course, is a pro-Palin group, and hopefully that will give you more exposure, not only in New Jersey, but everywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm abundantly inspired and grateful to Sarah Palin. The governor has done a, a wonderful job not only representing the good people of Alaska and bringing you know, revenue to Alaska through the oil industry when other governors had been asleep at the wheel, so she led through example. And because of that, people such as myself have been inspired. You know, I'm a businessman and an educator. I'm not a career politician. So I see an opportunity for Americans to rise. That's why I, rep- I, you know, I highly recommend term limits, and I will work very uh, uh, diligently towards them. I believe we need uh, regular Americans who understand the impact of business and, and everyday life to represent us in Washington. Term limits, you know, 12 years, two terms in the Senate, six terms in the House. After 12 years, thank you very much, and I'll go back to do your own business. We need term limits. We need fresh blood fresh ideas, because we simply cannot continue to send the same people to Washington and expect different results. We need fresh ideas from fresh candidates, and I truly believe that 2012 is the year of the citizen, not the year of the career politician. Tell us your website, Bader, so people can learn more about you and your candidacy. Oh, absolutely. It's bq2012.com, my initials for Bader Carmu, bq2012 dot com. Bader Carmood, thank you so much, sir. We'll continue to track your race, and good luck to you. I appreciate it. The the polls are uh, opening uh, June 5th, and when you go to vote, remember, the Q is for you. Bader Carmoot, his website again, folks, bq2012.com. That's bq2012.com. After helping Richard Murdoch in Indiana and Deb Fisher in Nebraska tally huge primary wins, Sarah Palin was at it again, showcasing her power in Texas this past week. That's where Palin-backed Ted Cruz forced a runoff for the U.S. Senate seat held by Kay Bailey Hutchison. Cruz and David Dewhurst will sprint to the campaign finish line. GOP voters will make their choice July 31st. Cruz forcing this runoff deals a blow to the establishment and solidifies the potency of Palin's pop in primaries. Now, while Bader Carmoot and New Jerseyans go to the polls this Tuesday, there will also be primaries held in South Dakota, New Mexico, California, and Montana. In Wisconsin, not a primary, but all eyes will be on that state. A huge recall vote taking place with Governor Scott Walker and Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish fighting to hold on to their positions that they rightfully earned. 
Sarah Palin is drumming up support for Walker and Clayfish and especially focusing on raising some cash for the lieutenant governor. Palin saying Rebecca Clayfish's opponent is getting massive last-minute funding from organizations out of Washington, D.C. Palin's asking us to show Clayfish that we have her back. You can help. Just go to RebeccaForReal.com and support our great friend. That's RebeccaForReal.com. Also, if you want to listen to Rebecca Clayfish's appearance here on the Palin Update, just go to SarahNetRadio.net and click on her picture. Folks, you can follow us on Twitter at SarahNetRadio, and we're now on Facebook, too. So please, like SarahNetRadio on Facebook. And if you want to really stick it to the left... You have to wait a little bit. Due to overwhelming demand, we're all out of Saranet Radio bumper stickers. We will restock soon, however, and they'll be available for purchase next time around. Thank you so much for all your support of the Palin Update program and the Saranet Radio Network. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Visit saranetradio.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. I want to thank everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Bader Carmoot, and thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us next time for another edition of the Palin Update. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.